So the last technique we talk about today, but maybe the most interesting, is I refer to as layering. Anybody here paint, paint, paint pictures for a hobby? Okay. Anybody seen the news late, lately about uh, the Da Vinci painting that's been found beneath another painting? No? Okay. So, if you look at some of the, the masters, the painting masters, you'll find that what they do, they they, what they've done is they found their paintings underneath. And sometimes these paintings are like little blobs. Actually, it shouldn't be. Maybe it should be red. And then they have like lots of blue. And then they have lots of green. Yeah. And then what the artist does is he gets white paint. This is white paint. This is, yeah. I'm going to paint it with white. Yeah. And he goes. So I'm painting over there with white. And then comes back to the painting and then starts to draw. <laughs> it's a smiley. <laughs> and then paints his clouds. And he paints his grass so I'll put this in auction later <laughs> so what 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 did the artist do no what did the artist do why did he why did he paint white over it It could be quite white. Some do, usually it'd be a, a zinc oxide, which is a little bit a lot of a translucent white. Oh, you can still see the practice. Uh... You can't actually see it consciously, and that's the whole point. You can't see it consciously, but what happens is that it adds this this depth to a painting that your brain actually does register the stuff underneath. The brain yeah? of the painter or the brain of the, the brain of the viewer. Yeah. So when you see it, a painting that's done by this technique, yeah, has this incredible depth, yeah, because of these layers. And this is going back to the Vinci stuff. This is good. Yeah. This goes back. And then yeah. Other yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, there, there is there is this too. There is this too. Yeah. But if you look at somebody like Salvador Dali, uh, this technique is yeah, is he, he's he's probably that for me is the master of it. Yeah, I mean I I remember when I was a teenager, I had a, a New Zealand friend, a New Zealander friend. Yeah, I, and in his flat he had these Salvador Dali prints on the walls. And do you know who I'm talking about? Salvador Dali paints pictures of melting clocks. Yeah, eyelids held up with sticks. Yeah, knife cutting through flesh. Uh, swans ref reflecting elephants, or elephants reflecting swans. I'm not which which way. Yeah, they call it surrealist. Yeah. And I looked at these these, and I used to kid him about it and say, well, you know, they're really they're, these are rubbish. These are like you know, these are s stupid pictures. Yeah. And then a couple of years later, I was on a bus going along the embankment past the Tate Gallery. And I saw that there was a Salvador Dali exhibition. And I got off the bus, went into the exhibition. I thought, I, I want to see, you know, see, see what the originals look like. And there was, a, there was a screen here. And about where you're sitting, yeah, there was the painting. And 
I walked through past this screen, I walked around the screen, and I saw the picture, and I went <laughs> like that. Because it was as if the painting was alive. Yeah? This is the incredible thing about Salvador Dali's painting. They have this incredible life. There's a picture of a knife cutting through flesh. Yeah? And it was like, wow, you know? The hair stood up on the back of my neck. Yeah? And now, Salvador Dali's like my, wow, you know, my hero, you know, he's like incredible, incredible painter. Yeah? So he sort of had added another dimension, but it was kind of like, sort of, it, it, the painting spoke to you. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. communicated. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So communication. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So, so you'd have to, we'd have to, have to be a painting something. It couldn't just be lots of interesting colours mocked together. No, I, I, I don't think it has to be a painting of something. I think it, I think it, it and you see this, um, sometimes you get just paintings that, that, that they, they have life. You know, they feel as though they're moving. I mean, if you ever experienced that, yeah? Look at some paintings. Yeah, I know. Even last year we had somebody paint a picture on, on the course, yeah? For us, yeah. And for, for Ryan, it really spoke to Ryan, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so how do, how does this how does this relate to to perfume? Well, the first company that I work for, Pico Laboratories, they produced a perfume yeah, called Le Tremble, the Blue Train, which was effectively a copy of Galan's Le Bleu same type of fragrance. And the perfumer created Le Trembleur, Patrick Hibbert, and he sent the samples out to IFF was one company, Juby and Roussel was another company where Jeff Brown was working. And Jeff Brown was the founder of Quintessence, yeah? And that's, that's partly why I know Jeff Brown. And uh, and a third company, and I can't think who it was at the moment. Yeah. And what he, he did was get them to copy the perfume. Now in those days, there was no GCMS. So it was all done by nose. So the copies were very slightly different from the original. And then he took his perfume. So you imagine that he's got his notes in his perfume and he ha added one percent of each of their perfumes to it so that effectively their perfumes with slightly different notes are underneath below the threshold This is the 50s. They just did it by nose. They did it, all did it by nose, yeah. So this, is, this really has to be done by nose. If you do it by GCMS, you would get the same ingredients. Yeah. So you wouldn't have this layering effect. So where you had like a rose note, their rose note would be very, very slightly different. So it would add this like extra, extra dimension. So this is, if you like, that's the threshold of what you can smell and these are below the threshold. But they're not really below the threshold because your brain does register them. Yeah? The original, this is the original. So this is his perfume. He sends it to another company. They don't have any machines to test it, so they smell it and they try to make it. They say, oh, it's got rose in it, but they don't use PEA, maybe they use phenyl ethyl, phenyl acetate. And, some, and they use maybe a base from Wardia, or a Wardia base from Fermanic, yeah, to get their rose effect, yeah, by a different way. So yeah? Yeah. 
So this layering adds this, this depth to it. So what, what I'd like you to do now is to get, get the perfumes that you did yesterday, yeah, and make sure you have enough for at least about 50 drops, yeah. Then I want you to divide them into two, yeah. And then we are going to add a layer to your perfume, yeah. And then I want you to compare the two, yeah, to see what you think. Make some more. <laughs> yeah, so, so double the formula or triple the formula. So you have enough, so you can pour at least 20 drops into another container. Yeah. Start a fresh one, because I, what we're going to do is we, one will be with your, your original, and one will be with a layer. Oh, yeah, add to the original. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, to the original. Yeah, 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 yeah. 